You're watching Seatome TV. Knowledge is power. So I'm just going to give you a bit of an overview of the different types of drugs. Okay. Um, so uh, the first and most uh, prominent type of chemotherapy drugs, standard chemotherapy drugs, are called alkylating agents. All right. An alkyl group is a it's a chemical group. Um, most common one that we think of is as a methyl group. It's just a combination of carbons, hydrogens, um, arranged in a certain order. Okay. So that's one type of chemotherapy. Yes. Alkylating agents. Alkylating agents. Got and it. so they're the oldest group. Um, and they are an actual you know, mustard gas was one of the, the first ones. It's an alkylating agent. And so what they do is they, um, they bind um, onto, uh, so when you give someone an alkylating drug, what it does is it creates these alkylating groups, these, these chemical groups, sometimes methylation groups and so on, and they bind onto proteins and DNA and um, you know, RNA. And so basically it's like throwing a bunch of nails into the blender and hoping they're going to bind onto something and stop it, the process. And that's what they do, is they gum right. things up. Too. Okay. So they so gum up the DNA. Not very precise, no, but it can no, it's work. Not, it's it like can work very well. Wheel. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Cog in the wheel. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, stopping those cells for, for mm -hmm. recycling. Um, the important thing about alkylating agents is, um, while most chemotherapy agents are dependent on a certain phase of the cell cycle, so the cell cycle, the reproduction of a cell, the copying of a cell, has a, a various cycles through mitosis. Um, so alkylating agents are not affected by which um, which part of the cycle the cell is in when you get the drug. Mm -hmm. So for example, one cancer cell may be in one phase where it's copying the DNA, another one may be separating the chromosomes, um, you know, another cancer cell may be actually into dividing the cell and you know, there's all these different phases mm -hmm. of the cell cycle that you, know, you learn in, in grade 8, grade 9 biology. And um, we're not going to go over that. No, thank you. Um, so so uh, these alkylating agents are not affected by what stage the cell is in. Mm -hmm. Whereas the other ones uh, typically require the cell to be in a certain stage for them to affect them. Okay, so they work on a different, uh, on the mechanism of a certain stage. Right, okay. whereas alkylating agents don't. Right. They're right. independent of Got that. Yes. So was that, well, uh, after the, say, the mustard gas and the kind of the shotgun approach, uh, this was Alkylating the... agent is mustard gas. Oh, it is, yes. okay. Yes. So that, so this really kind of was the first type or? Yeah, the oh. first, one of the, well, nitrogen mustard gas was the okay. first, yes. So um, there's basically five different subtypes of alkylating agents that we look at. Okay. And they are nitrogen mustard gases, and a common one is cyclophosphamide. Um, I remember that from my first year biology, we <laughs> used that. And then uh, nitrous ureas, um, a common one is lomastine. Uh, I'm not the, right now these days. No, the that. tetrazines, um, <laughs> and uh, tetrazines are a very important class of drugs. Um, one of them uh, is temozolomide, TMZ, and it's, it's very, very important drug for glioblastoma multiform and it's quite a tolerable drug it's a good mm -hmm. drug to have so that's a drug that is common you know commonly used quite a bit mm -hmm. uh, then there's uh, as aziridines um, and then common one for that is called mitomycin mm -hmm. and then finally we have the platins uh, cisplatin carboplatin oxaliplatin and these are alkylating agents still uh, yeah they they okay. they act as alkylating agents oh okay um, so the platins, as you know, uh, have uh, the, the metal platinum in them, which is found in catalytic converters of, of uh, cars. Hmm. And the reason it's used in catalytic converters of cars is because it's able to bond large amounts of, of hydrocarbons and oh. hydrogens and so on. Hmm. And so the platins um, do the similar thing, but in, in cancer cells in your body. Hmm. Yeah, so they're like a little catalytic converter mm. in your body cool. cleaning things up yeah I was just I'm picturing a vacuum or something like yeah. that you know like, wow yeah. okay so it's important to understand that the different classes of chemotherapy drugs um, some chemotherapy drugs can fit in multiple classes so they'll have multiple functions you know they can be cross designated so it's not a limited um, system understood of we, groups, won't, so. we won't hold you to the perfect stratification. <laughs> Thank you. So those are the alkylating agents. Okay. Now, then we have the anti-metabolites, and there's typically about four, you know, four or five different subgroups. And so what they do, um, 
as the name describes, is they impede the uh, synthesis of DNA and RNA in the cell as it's reproducing. Hmm. So because of that, um, they're dependent on a certain cell phase, and that's the copying phase. It's known as the S phase hmm. of the cell cycle. So when the DNA is being copied, um, so there's going to be extra copies so the cell can separate and both cells can have an equal amount of the chromosomes. That's the process of copying cycles when these anti-metabolites work. Okay, but again, they're working on all the cells, even the good ones that we want yes. to have reproduced. Exactly. exactly. Uh, okay, but that is yeah. what they do. Okay. Yeah, but they're unique to that, that cell cycle. Yeah. And so um, they are typically uh, kind of like a Trojan horse in a sense. Hmm. They, they form similar structures to the building blocks of DNA and RNA. So it's like taking a piece of DNA oh. and putting in one of these anti-metabolite anti drugs that looks the same. So, so the DNA and the RNA will actually incorporate these drugs into their structure. Mm. And then once they do that, they can't be used. I so see. it's like a Trojan horse effect. Okay. And so, yeah, they're typically incorporated into... RNA and, and does that then trigger the death of the cell? Is that yeah, what, yeah, yeah, okay. it, uh, programmed, yeah, pre programmed cell death, apoptosis. Mm. And so, as for as I mentioned, there's four different classes of these there's the antifolates, um, common drug is called pemetrexate, used for lung cancer, it's very effective. Mm. Um, the fluoropyrimidines, uh, pyrimidine is part of the DNA, and there are fluorouracil and capocytobine, also known as zelota. And then there's uh, deoxynucleoside analogs, mm. and those are cytoarabine and gemcitabine, uh, common ones. And the theopurines, which we, I don't see a lot of those, I believe the one with, with captopurine. And so this purine is also a molecule that's, that's involved in the biosynthesis of DNA and RNA and so on. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and then we have the uh, different class of drugs called the antimicrotubules. Okay, this is class three. Yes, a third class, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, this requires a bit of an explanation, and I do remember this still from my first year biology because we did some experiments on this. So um, what these are, um, so in order for structures and chromosomes to move around the cell, we have this intricate system of what we call tubulins. And these tubulins are composed of some little Lego blocks called alpha and beta tubulin. And what they do is they form these long structures like hairs. They're, they're almost like biological cranes. And they form so fast that they move things. Mm. And then they oh. disassemble so fast that they can pull things around. And, mm. and so when this chromosome needs to be moved over here or pulled over here, um, all of a sudden this alpha and beta tubulin form this, you know, quickly form this tube attached to the chromosome and, and they grow and by growing, they push it out. So they kind of like a stem of a plant. Right. You know, they, they, they function. And these are, these are what happens in the cell. And there's a wonderful video on this um, a few years ago. It was one of, the, one of the first real animation, you know, flash videos years and years ago. And it showed the actual um, alpha and beta tubulins growing and moving these things. And it showed dynins and kinesins walking proteins along these tubes. Mm. And so these tubes are the molecular scaffolds in the transportation wow. system mm. inside the cells. Mm. So these are constantly going on. This is how things move around in our cells, how DNA is made, how things are made. Wow. And it's a constant process where you're building up this alpha and beta tubulin and breaking it down. Wow. And that's, you know, it's basically like growth, growth of a, a stem hmm, of a plant. Interesting. So there's two classes. They're what we call the vinca alkaloids. And ironically, both classes come from plants. Okay. So the vinca alkaloids, um, the most common one is a periwinkle. Um, That's the name of the drug? Name or of the, the plant. Oh, name of the plant. Yeah. Okay, Mad I was Madagas going to say. Madagascar periwinkle. Oh, okay, thank you. To. Um, a common drug has been christine. And so this class of drugs prevents the assembly of these alpha and beta tubulins. Stops my cranes from stops, forming. Stops them from forming, yes. Mm. Then you have another class of these drugs, uh, antimicrotubules, called, uh, called taxanes. And they're very important drugs, um, used quite a bit. And so taxanes are originally derived from the Pacific yew tree. Okay. Um, and they do the opposite. They prevent these alpha and beta tubulin chains from disassembly. 
Oh. Uh, so there, yes. Okay. So, so you have this long tube and it's made and it's pushed a chromosome under the, you know, across the side of the cell, but now it can't break down. Okay. And so number one is a limited resource of these alpha and beta tubulins. They're reused. And then number two, if you have a bunch of structures all over the cell, you're going to gum it up pretty fast and it's going to commit suicide. Ah. So they're, they're quite effective. So, so the first one, the vinca alkaloids prevent this alpha and beta tubulin from assembling in the first place. Mm -hmm. And the taxanes do the opposite. Once it's assembled, they mm -hmm. prevent it from being broken down and recycled. Okay. Got it. And so uh, common drugs are paclitaxel, uh, taxels, um, and so they, they are very specific to a certain part of the cell cycle where chromosomes do get exchanged. It's called, it's called the boundary of G2 and M, uh, paclitaxel is. Okay. And then um, docetaxel is another drug of this class, and it works in a different cell cycle. It actually works in, in the synthesis component, uh, the S phase. Okay. Um, and so once again, they're from the Pacific yew tree. Now, the problem with these drugs is they're not water soluble. So um, they have to be mixed in a certain way to enter the body. And, and sometimes the, the drugs or the, you know, the, the components that they mix them with can have some side effects in people. Mm. So um, they do tend to have side effects. Mm. Um, ironically, they're, you know, natural. But... Mm -hmm. So then we have what's called the topoisomerase inhibitors. And there's uh, three different classes of these. Topoisomerase? Yes. So in order for DNA to be uh, copied or for you know, um, transcription to occur, DNA is in a double helix, as you know. It has, to be un it has to be separated. The DNA has to be pulled apart. The two strands have to be pulled apart and unwound because it's all coiled up in this DNA uh, double helix, as you know. Um, you've seen the double helix. Yes. <laughs> so in order for you to copy this DNA or to create a protein out of the gene that this DNA encodes, you have to separate those two strands. Okay. And then you have to unwind those two strands because they're wound up and under tension. And so there's two classes of molecules that do this. Um, they're called topo, topo isomerases. And there's topoisomerase 1 and topoisomerase 2. And so a class of, of uh, uh, chemotherapy drugs inhibits both of these enzymes. Oh. Um, so uh, the first one is topoisomerase 1 inhibitors, um, a drug that's commonly used uh, called arenotecan. Hmm. Um, we're seeing its uh, revival. It's being used a lot because it seems to be very effective in a type of colon cancer um, that uh, other treatments aren't. And those are KRAS mutated colon cancers. So when we see a KRAS mutation in a colon cancer, we always try to recommend that um, the patient gets an arena TCAN based platform. Hmm. So we're not quite sure why they're more successful. Uh, well, there's going to be a variety of mutation? reasons. Oh. I'm sure if we look down at the molecular level, we okay. can explain. It's it. unique to each person. It is. It, yes. Okay, got it. Yes. So um, areno tecan is actually uh, a synthetic version of a, um, a Chinese ornamental plant. Um, I wrote the name down here. It is uh, uh, camp Camptotheca. Yeah, Camptotheca. Okay. Let's see I, if I we can find it. I didn't know the name of that. <laughs> okay. Okay, but that's areno tecan. That's yes. the that's the name you need to know. Yes. It's just the name of the drug, right? Yes. And then we have um, the topoisomerase two inhibitor. So that was a topoisomerase 1 inhibitor and the topoisomerase 2 inhibitors. And there are two different classes. They're poisons and catalytic inactivators. So there's two subgroups here. Okay. Um, the poisons are etoposide and doxorubicin. Mm -hmm. And then the catalytic inhibitors, which block the actual activity of topoisomerase 2. Um, uh, there's a drug I'm not aware of. It's called uh, alclarubicin. I've never heard of it before. Hmm. It's my first. Not time. widely prescribed then. Apparently not. Mm -hmm. And what what was the the first <coughs> one there that you mentioned two that were specific to the poisons? A topoisomerase two inhibitors. Um, this poisons and catalytic inhibitors. Mm -hmm. And what was some of the drug names for the poisons? Uh, doxorubicin and etoposide. Doxorubicin. I knew I'd heard of it. And etoposide. Okay. 
Okay. So, have, am I right? Am I following along here? We have, uh, is this three or are we on four here? Four, that, we're about to go to okay. five. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. And so the final class of, of chemotherapy agents, standard chemotherapy agents, um, are actually uh, antibiotics. They're called cytotoxic antibiotics. Hmm. Yeah. I was not expecting that. Yeah. And so um, there's a class, there's three different classes. Um, well, there's probably a lot more, but um, three main ones. Um, the anthocyclines. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and they're doxorubicin and uh, epirubicin. Didn't we just hear about doxorubicin yes. over in the southern? Yes, we did. Okay, yes. All right. Two different. It's got two different roles. All right. Yes. So um, they cause uh, they can cause heart issues, oh. um, cardiotoxicity, and they mm. also cause something called febrile neutropenia. Hmm. That doesn't sound good. No, it's uh, something. It sounds painful. It it can it can be a. Uh, uh, a serious issue. Mm. How are these things working? That's get that's making them have those heart side effects. What are they? Well, I doing? would assume that it's because it has multiple mechanisms mm. versus single mechanisms. I mean, mm. we could get into it, and I could look at the details and find out the exact reason. Um, Maybe we'll do that another day. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's good. Um, and then we also have a different class called the bleomycins, okay. and then the mitomycin C. Now you you might uh, remember mitomycin from the alkylating agents too. <laughs> yes, because I'm remembering everything. <laughs> I'm gonna have to read these notes over about twenty times now. But I do see a TMZ. TMZ. Mm -hmm. And mitomycin. TMZ is a tetra tetrazine. Okay, but yes, those are up in the alkylating agents yes, list. Exactly. Yes. Okay, got it. Okay, so some of these some of these drugs cross over and mm -hmm. and, and are they in have the multiple of these mechanisms. Yeah. I see. Okay, and some of them, you know. Uh, this mechanism so All right. we don't even understand which is starting to make sense to me you see reports go by my desk as to mm -hmm. why i might see some of these more than others mm -hmm. exactly. is that you yes. know some of them are doing double duty here yeah, yeah. okay Okay, so all, ultimately all chemotherapy works the same way which is interferes to with interfere with, cycle, with the yeah. cell life it, uh, cycle, cell cycle. That's right, and uh, and again, we have these side effects because some uh, sometimes uh, just interfering with that cycle produces side effects. Of course, and yes. then there's the the other things that might be mixed with the mm -hmm. drug that might give the side effects, mm -hmm. and then just some of the other kind of mm -hmm. correlated uh, effect on the body. Yes, exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching Seatome TV. Subscribe below and stay informed.